Hey there, welcome to Fiddlehead Fiddle Lessons. Okay, do you struggle with playing in time? If you said yes, then take heart, because you're not the only one. And there's something you can do. So I've created a whole bunch of lessons recently on how to play better in time. This might be the most important one. It's how to practice with a metronome. Some of you may have tried playing with a metronome before, and you hated it. But I'm guessing you didn't use it well. You didn't go into it slowly. Step-by-step -step method for learning the metronome. And so that's what I hope to show you today. How to make it fun, how to make it really useful for you with whatever you're doing. And a big takeaway before we get into some specific steps is that the metronome is like a new instrument. And so when you start a new instrument, you don't start with a difficult piece like Orange Blossom Special or Beethoven's Fifth, you start with very simple things. And so that's really the overriding theme we're gonna get across, okay? So I'm just gonna give you five steps for successful metronome practice. Number one, learn things without the metronome. Number two, practice timing without your fiddle. Number three, Start with single notes, then add complexity. Number four, alternate between listening and playing. Number five, record yourself playing to a metronome. Now let's go into more detail on each step. First step was learn things without the metronome. When you first learn something, there's a lot of technical problems to figure out there's you your fingers are, are trying out different ways to do it different angles your bows trying different things maybe you want to work on direction you're trying to get a, a good sound there's a lot to remember about the melody there's just a lot to remember in general and so the ultimate advice for when you're first learning a tune is to do it in free time have no beat going because that's just going to be a distraction while you're trying to work out this other stuff. Does that make sense? So let's say I have some little riff I'm learning. And then when I get into it, I realize, oh, well, like let's say I haven't, I, I'm just learning it for the first time. Maybe let A low one to D three is really hard. So I need to play it very slowly. I need to try finger finding it in different ways. I need to maybe play it a little faster, maybe slow it down. Point is that my tempo should be allowed to fluctuate while figuring it out. And then figuring out the whole melody, maybe I try it a little slower. And then, and then once I get a sense that I can do this thing, whatever it is, Let's say I was able to play it a few times in a row, then I can try it with a metronome. A metronome will act as a kind of test even to see how well you know it, okay? So just to sum up, learn the, the piece or the technique or the scale without the metronome and then add it later to tighten up the timing. Step two for ultimate metronome success is to practice your timing without your fiddle. It would have been really cool if I just threw this and it just flew off into space and you didn't hear it fall. Just imagine that. That would make this video a lot funnier. Okay, so practice without the fiddle. How do you do that? You have your metronome where maybe it's an old school box. I don't have one. That would be a great prop. Uh, or just on your phone. And you have a spare five minutes in your day. You're, you know, your partner's going into the drugstore to pick up some cough syrup because they have a cough or something and you have five minutes, you're waiting in the car, you can just put on the metronome and simply practice different rhythms. Simply just practicing clapping with the beat is good. And then practice rhythms, hoe down like long, short, short, long, short, short, long, short, short, long. You could even sing little bits of tunes you're working on, like the beginning of Arkansas Traveler. Do 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 again. Do 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 do. 
practicing with the metronome and on and on. All right, so why is this a good idea? Why bother doing this? Well, if you think about it, when you're playing the fiddle, it's a much more complex problem. You're having to think about all the technical stuff. And then timing on top of that. The beauty of this idea is that you're just working on your timing in a very simple format, just clapping, or even just listening to the beat, or even singing or, or using syllables like tat, 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 just little things, and just do it for like, like a little bit a day, five minutes a day or something. And then what's great about this practice tip is that you can practice things without your fiddle, all, a lot of other things. A few big ideas would be practicing recall of tunes. So tunes that you've already learned, you, wanna, you can listen to a bunch of tunes in five minutes and then, oh yeah, okay, I got those back in my mind. Or a tune you wanna learn, listen to it a whole one tune a whole bunch of times before you go to start it. So d just a few side teaching ideas for that, okay? So that's practicing without the fiddle. Okay, so the third step to metronome success, start with single notes, then add complexity. This is really the most important idea, I think. A lot of people, when they start playing a metronome with a metronome, they start with a very difficult piece or even just any full tune, and it's very hard to sync up because it's, remember, this is a new instrument you're playing, the fiddle metronome complex. It's a new thing, so you gotta start at the very beginning, single notes. And so if you do, if you take this approach, then you're gonna succeed, I guarantee it. You're gonna, it's gonna work with the met metronome. It takes a bit of patience first, but it's very satisfying. So we're gonna go, I'll tell you the, the, the full practice progression. Single notes, two note exercises called intervals, then scales, then tune phrases, and then whole tunes. And then at any point, something is difficult, let's say you start a tune phrase that's too hard, you just go back a step or two to scales or intervals. All right, does that make sense? So we're gonna start with just single notes and let's start with a, a very medium tempo, 60 beats per minute, and we're gonna make it as easy as possible. We're just gonna play one to one. These are quarter notes and just playing single notes with the chord, with the beat. So for a lot of you, this will be easy at first, but I challenge you to keep doing it until you get a little bit bored and see what happens. Something very strange and psychedelic will happen. You'll notice that the beat starts to sound like it's slowing down. Once you get good at it, it's because there's some natural tendency to speed up, to velocitate when you play, and everybody does it. I do it all the time, all right? So playing something very steadily at a slow tempo can be challenging over time. So now, the next thing you can do is do more complex things still on a single string. So you could do eighth notes. One and two and three and four and. You can do sixteenth notes. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and. You can do half notes, which are longer. So one, two, three, four, or whole notes, okay? Then we move on to rhythms. We can do some simple rhythms right now, like hoe down. Long, short, short, long, short, short, quarter, eighth, eighth, quarter, eighth, eighth. We can do triplets. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four. So all just single notes still. And then for more advanced things, you could do tricky rhythms, like syncopated rhythms, like. All right, so I have a, another lesson coming out around soon, around soon, that's uh, syncopated rhythms. Syncopation's a little trickier, but you can still use the metronome with it in this way, all right? So the next step after single notes is two notes, so adding complexity. The easiest kind of two note interval would probably be like open D to D1. So like. And then once 
once you get that, you can add more complex rhythms, like. Whatever, any, any rhythm you can add to each note, okay? And then you could work on harder and harder intervals, more complexity now. You could work on like A low one to D three. And then you could add rhythms to that or anything with string crossing, okay? So now after two, no two notes, the next logical step is a whole scale. And maybe you need you want to do something intermediate like a four note pattern. But now let's just take a uh, let's just do it on a whole D major scale. So one to one, up and down. So I recommend you try that, and again, do it at least twice. That's a good rule of thumb too. Play everything twice. Practice everything twice. You can't go wrong with that as a rule of thumb. All right. So. If you can play that scale and it feels like it's flowing, then you can add rhythms to that. If that feels like it's flowing, then you can take the next level of complexity, which is a piece of a tune, not the whole tune yet. And so eventually you might be able to just jump into the end game and play certain easier tunes with the beat. But I really recommend starting with this progression. So Arkansas Traveler, let's just do the first bar only. And then start over. Again, I challenge you to do that for like a minute and see if you can stay in time for a minute. It might be easy at first and get harder or the opposite. It might be a struggle and then you get in the groove. And basically we just do bigger and bigger pieces throughout the tune until you can do the whole tune, all right? Does that make sense? So this whole process, you can, do, you can do over and over with other things. Anytime you learn a new tune, once you can play the tune and, and you kind of warmed up, then, then warm up your metronome. Remember it's another instrument, warm up your metronome skills, single notes, intervals, scales, one phrase from the tune, then the whole tune. And if you can't do the whole tune, then you just have to take it back a step, do a phrase, Take it back a step further, okay? So this practice, this pr practice progression can be used on anything as well. All the things in, in this lesson, these five steps, apply to a lot more than timing, but we'll stay focused on timing for now. Step four for ultimate metronome success is to alternate between listening and playing. So this is a very simple practice. We put on a metronome. Let's stick with Arkansas Traveler, first bar. Listen, two, three, four. Listen, two, three, four, and keep going. So why, why do this? Why is it a good idea? Well, a lot of students, when they're playing, they start with the beat and then they become totally out of sync with the beat. They get totally out of sync. And so what this does is you take a little piece of music and you alternate between playing it and listening. And during that listening phase, you get to reconnect with the beat, you get to feel the groove again, and then you try again. And each time, you're gonna probably get to a little bit more on time when you play that little bit. And then of course, you can do bigger bits. You can do a, a two bar part. And then you maybe wanna take, you, you can vary the length of the silence. Maybe if you do a, like a whole A part of a tune, you, you'll take, four beat silent to reconnect with the metronome and then start again. You see, you don't have to necessarily wait for the length of the tune in silence. Whatever works for you, but the point is, that little bit of silence is a time for you to hear the beat, feel it, reconnect, and then renew and start. So the fifth and final tip for metronome, ultimate metronome success is to record yourself playing with the metronome. So you can simply Put on a metronome beat, whatever it is. I'm now at 90 beats per minute. I was before at 60 beats per minute. And just play, play whatever it is you're working on. First quarter of Arkansas Traveler. And let's do the fourth quarter. Do 
it a few times. All right, and then I, I would pause that and, and I would go and listen to it. I don't know if you noticed, I started to speed up. And so I would, when the beauty of recording is that you're not gonna always be able to perceive things that are off because you're so, you're trying so hard. I know you guys are working so hard to learn the fiddle and you just can't even perceive it. And so the beauty of the recording is that then you can set the fiddle down. You don't have to do all that work of playing and you can really tell, you have a much better idea whether your timing is, is good or not, all right? So when you make these recordings and just in general note about recording yourself, I recommend doing things on the short side because then you can you can stop, you can set down your fiddle and listen, and it's not you're not having to weed through a bunch of stuff to find the thing you actually need to listen to. All right, so um, so that's it. So and that the idea of recording yourself is just the ultimate way to be your own teacher as well. You're getting instant feedback on your playing from that. So anyway, I hope that this will encourage you to use a metronome, to work on your timing, and to have fun with practice because you can practice anything. You can practice anything, you can practice anything. All right guys, thanks for watching this. And if you wanna improve your timing more, I have a bunch of lessons coming out. I have a lesson on syncopated riffs, I have lessons on playing faster, on why, re, lesson on why you should play more slowly, and a, f a few other timing related lessons. And I updated some older lessons from my course that, that will go along with this as well. Thank you for watching, having fun teaching you guys and I'm starting to meet some of you and that's great too. So we'll see you down the line. All right. Go to fiddlehead.com for a progressive step-by-step -step course outline, color-coded tabs, play-along tracks, sheet music, and much more. Thanks for watching the video Excellent! And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.